Alright, it's been a while. I was asked to show how to make one of my ramen recipes. So I'm going to actually show you guys how instead of using bourbon, you can make the same type of recipe out of brandy. I'm just kidding in the house for one second. Alright, so what you're going to need to basically make brandy brown sugar salmon is you're going to need a package of salmon. I'm going to be using four that are fairly large portions. Um, sometimes people like them smaller. It's up to you for preference, but I'll show you four about four that are the size um, and the amount that you're supposed to use. So first things, the first ingredients are all going to be three. So three tablespoons of your brown sugar or whatever sugar you'd like to use. Um, but in this recipe, it's brown sugar. I'm going to use three tablespoons of brandy. I like to use, uh, I believe this is a V-S-O-P. Um, it says it on there, but this is E&J. Um, doesn't really matter. Again, it's with your preference. You're then going to use two tablespoons of soy sauce of your choice. I like Kikomet. Personally, it doesn't taste good when you use other brands. Um, for one tablespoon, you're going to use one of lime juice. And you're going to want to have fresh ginger and garlic. If you're a ginger or garlic lover, you can put more. But ideally, you would like one tablespoon of your ginger and at least three cloves that are inside the bowl of garlic, which is probably about a tablespoon too. I didn't really measure it out, but I'll see how it is when I'm cutting everything up. And then you're going to want about a quarter of a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, because that's a big difference, of black pepper. You can use the ground brown, yeah, the ground black pepper, or you can use it already ground, which I like McCormick. And then when you're done for topping it off, you can add some sesame seeds. Or um, if you have the toasted sesame seeds, that tastes actually a little bit better. And to put some scallions, which is like the green onions, they're also called. Another alternative to this recipe is you could use your Worcester sauce, and you can put about two teaspoons of that into this whole mix. Um, but today I'm not going to be going that route. So I'll show you guys um, the first little step, and then go see how it is when it's done. What I like to do, also for one new kitchen tip, is that I like to put my ingredients directly into the bag because that's where the fish is going to be going, and you can use the bag and massage it in the bag without having to dirty up the dish or bowl. So now what I'm going to do is take three tablespoons, and they're heaping tablespoons. It doesn't have to be measured perfectly because those that have been following my account for a while know I don't really measure things. So that's my three. Sorry, you can hear Dottie in the back. He's in my room right now. And then you're going to want your three tablespoons of your brandy if you're age. <laughs> and you're going to pepper the garlic. I'm going to put it into my measuring cup because I'm curious if that's about an ounce or not. So it looks like it's like half an ounce. It's not even because two ounces is equivalent of a quarter cup for those that are curious. It's also 50 milliliters. Okay, put that in. My next step is to cut up my ginger and garlic. But before I do that, I might as well add my dry seasoning, which is going to be a quarter of a teaspoon. If you're careful, you can use a tablespoon. But what you do is you just look at eyeballing it. So like one tablespoon is two to three teaspoons, I believe. Um, so if you just use like a, I don't even know, um, maybe about a sixteenth of a tablespoon, um, it's only like a few dashes. And if you like more pepper, then by all means you can add a little bit more. vegetables, add it in, or technically I guess they herbs, and then let it marinate. It can marinate anywhere for like 30 minutes to however much time you have, like an hour, three hours. The longer it marinates, the better it's going to taste. Um, you can do this one of, one of two ways. One on top of the stove or inside the oven, if you have an oven. If you do this inside the stove, um, I like to do it at like 400 degrees for like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, as soon as it starts to have like a white flakiness on the top, um, then you know it's pretty much done. Um, you don't have to flip it at all. Other tip too is once the 15 to 20 minutes is done, depending on your stove or what type of stove, your climate, your altitude, all that fun stuff, you then can actually put it on roll for about one to two minutes on low. If you do it on high, it could burn it. Um, but ideally, the juice that comes from this, it shouldn't really evaporate at all if you did it right. And I'm sure if you follow this, you probably will do it right, so stay tuned. One kitchen tip. If you want to, instead of when you're peeling your garlic um, by cutting the edge off, which I usually tend to do, but sometimes you end up losing more than you planned. So what you can do is a dry garlic clove. You can just twist it. Do the twist. <laughs> and all of the skin come off. I hope you like that tip. Okay, so I use one clove ball or bowl. Um, that's roughly how much it came out to be. And this is how much ginger. I'm going to probably not use all of it, but I like a lot of ginger and garlic, so I might end up mostly. So that's about five pieces of the individual pieces of the garlic and about maybe five slices of the ginger, all minced. Depending on how big your portions are, you might want to double the recipe. But right now, I'm probably just going to stick with keeping it this amount. I'm 
when you have the vacuum sealed containers. Um, if you don't have a knife, you can also use a razor blade. Just be careful. When you're done, you want to lay this all flat, like this. Okay, it's at 400 degrees. So after I have my sounding in my bag, then what I'm going to do is rub the ring with the fish and let it marinate. <laughs> and meanwhile, while that's sitting there, you're going to want to your trash and make it a cleanup time easier. You would like to use a parchment, no, yeah, a Pyrex container, but you can use parchment paper and line it, not that you have to. But sometimes with this, it likes to stick to it. And when I put it in, it'll be a lot easier to take out. And on that note, I'll show you guys how it looks when it's done. Okay, so my 15 to 20 minutes is up. That's how it looks. I'm going to take it out so you guys can see better. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take my timer off and I'm gonna change it from conventional bake to raw. And I don't want high, I want low. This is how it looks before putting it on raw. I'll probably have it in raw for maybe about five minutes. Okay, so the roll is done and it smells amazing. I'll show you how it looks. And that's it. Now, if you want, you can roll it a few more minutes if you want to have like more toasty, like crispy on the top, but right now it's good enough. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, comment, and hit the bell for more notifications. Bye.